Hi everyone, thank you so much for checking out this latest video on the Real Housewives of New Jersey. Thank you so much for checking out Show, Style, and Spirit. If you have not already done so, please subscribe and please like this video. It would mean so much to me. Okay, so now we are on episode four of season 12, and episode four is called Shady Down the Shore. So the episode opens up at Jackie's college party. Remember at the end of episode three, they were all at Jackie's college party where she's got the kegs, you know, they're all ha having a good time, like they're still in the college dorms. And the episode ended with Dolores and Jackie in each other's faces after Jennifer tells Dolores that Jackie said to Jennifer, you need to question your friendship with Dolores because there's no way that she can be a true friend to both you and Margaret. So let's get back to that point. So they're in each other's faces and Jackie said she's not scared of Dolores in her confessional. She says she's calling her out on her ish. Frank goes over to Dolores to check on her because he said she's a street fighter from Patterson. So Frank Catalina is Dolores's ex-husband. And as you can see, I kind of, you know, my eyes kind of lit up and you're going to find out more why I like, I'll find out more later why, because I really like Frank Catalina. Okay. So um, he says that Dolores is a street fighter from Patterson, so he wanted to make sure that things do not escalate. And you know, a side note, you know, I'm sure there's a ton of reasons why Frank and Dolores divorced years ago, but there is a bond and it could be because, you know, they share kids together. But I do sense that there's like a genuine closeness there. So I don't know if Dolores wants to revisit dating Frank again and if he's open to dating her as well. But I just think that that bond is nice. So anyway, Margaret and Jennifer squash things at the college party. In my notes, I have two question marks. So. When Jennifer and Margaret was talking at Jackie's college party, this is after Dolores and Jackie get into each other's faces. You know, Margaret said, you know, you really came after me when I had my affair, you know, Margaret cheated on her husband. And you know, yet your husband wasn't um, guilt-free, wasn't innocent. And Jennifer was explaining that you know, the reason why she tries to uphold her husband in such a positive light in spite of him hurting her is because she does not want to dim his light in front of their kids. She doesn't want to ruin his image in front of their kids. So in Margaret's confessional, I want to read this from my notes. Margaret says in her confessional of Jennifer that Jennifer is brainwashed thinking that when a man cheats, it's the wife's fault. And I'm not totally convinced that Jennifer's mindset is that she did something wrong because her husband Bill cheated on her. Now don't get me wrong, some people may have that type of mindset which is almost like self-abusive. You know, some therapists say the way a person treats you has nothing to do with you and everything to do with them. So if that's true, then when a person, your spouse, your partner, when they cheat on you, it has nothing to do with you. It's their choices. It's their moment of weakness or moments of weakness. And I just don't get that vibe from Jennifer. I think that she chose to forgive her husband, to remain in her marriage, and to try and make it work. And for her, that included um, her kids not seeing her bash their dad and always be cranky and cold towards him. So when she says she really speaks highly of her husband, I think that that's Jennifer putting in concrete, strong effort to uh, not be hostile and unforgiving towards him. So, you know, I have to, I have to admire anybody that will, you know, stay in a marriage after infidelity, you know, so... 
big ups to Jen for that. And if you disagree with me, definitely put it in the comments. But I don't uh, feel like, I don't really feel like she thinks it's her fault that her husband cheats. I hope that later on, you know, at the reunion or if Jennifer gets interviewed after yesterday's episode, I hope that she's asked that question and that she clarifies. Okay, so then the college party ends and uh, at the end of the college party, Melissa Gorga tells the ladies that she's going to go down to the shore. You know, some of them rent shore houses and um, she invites all of them down so that they can hang out. But the college party definitely ends on a high note because Frank, uh, Dolores' ex-husband, and Tracy, who's married to Tiki Barber, they are doing keg stands. Now, I don't know if you've ever done a keg stand, I have not, but I have witnessed people do them at Michigan State University. Go green, okay? And uh, it's always entertaining watching people hold someone up by their legs and they take the beer straight to the head and you're counting how many seconds they can take it. Oh yes, I love my college. Go green, go white. All right, so we then, um, I'm gonna switch gears and it's gonna get a little serious for a moment because Jackie actually uh, met with a medical professional at a center that specializes in eating disorders. Jackie explained that she only eats salads and experiences lightheadedness and numbness in her fingertips. So she's actually has had the thought process, she's been concerned, you know, about whether or not she's even getting enough nutrients to her body. And the medical professional starts scheduling, you know, these medical tests for Jackie, because she says, you know, I want you to take these tests before you start treatment for the eating disorder, because they just want to make sure that Jackie's healthy. So um, Jackie spoke in detail about her issues with her weight going back to high school when she said that the boys would say they wanted to date a girl whom they could pick up with their pinky finger. So she internalized that and she was, you know, a little thick in high school. So she actually went to Weight Watchers in high school and then in undergrad, that's when she started eliminating food from her diet and now she's just down to salad. And then in my mind, I wonder, and what is on that salad? She said to the medical professional, lots of lettuce. So I'm guessing like lettuce, cucumber, tomato, and maybe oil and vinegar. You know, I don't even know. It's, it was like kind of sad for me and um, serious, but I'm very glad that Jackie is so um, vulnerable and open enough to share her struggle on TV because hopefully it will resonate with someone who um, has that severe body image to where they would cut everything out of their diet just to physically look a certain way. You know, typically we always hear on the flip side about people being overweight and being body shamed for not being beautiful and then that affects the self-esteem and then that could affect their choices in life and if they let people mistreat them and etc and etc so to hear Jackie's story on the flip side we don't hear often you know and it's her already being a uh, slender and beautiful already married with kids and has given birth and she's still skinny you know, and she's still struggling and as a result has an eating disorder. So I just commend Jackie for sharing her story with us. And I really hope that um, what she allows herself to eat and take into her body does improve and, and get more healthy. So we see Dolores and her ex-husband Frank uh, meet at a restaurant to have lunch with their two kids, Gabby and their son Frank. So they are young adults. And a couple of things, you know, first off, I wanna say that I just love Dolores' skin tone. You know, she looks so naturally tan, and I think her skin tone is a look that many people who go tanning, they aspire or fantasize to look like naturally. So that's, I think she's beautiful. So then when they're at the restaurant, first Dolores gets there first with their son, Frank, and then Gabby, their daughter, walks in. 
So the brother gets up to hug his sister Gabby and Gabby says, oh, my brother gets up to greet me, but not my mother. Dolores is quick wit. She's, she has that quick wit. And she says, I don't greet you. You greet me. I'm the mother. And I'm thinking, yes, Dolores, you know, and don't get me wrong because I am the baby of a large family. You know, everybody had something to say all the time about everything. So it kind of made me withdraw. So the fact that Gabby is like this young adult, early 20s, you know, not being uh, fearful to speak. I respect that. But then also you have to keep in mind of what you're saying, you know, and who you're saying it to. So I'm glad that Dolores put her back in her place like, yo, I'm the mother. And then similarly, once their dad, Frank, arrives, he's actually letting them know, like, because he came in and he hugged Gabby. So, you know, Gabby's a baby. And he said hi to everyone. And he said, look, you know, I'll do whatever I can for you all to be happy and at peace. But I'm still the parent. I'm still the dad, you know, and he was firm about it. So I have to respect that. You know, I just feel like that scene showed a lot of balance. And I thought that that was wonderful. So Frank is going to move into their home. And the kids were like laying down the law. They're like, Dad, you cannot bring home anyone to have sex with. We definitely don't want to hear anything. So Frank seems very much so like the lover. And I'm going to get more into that in just a moment. So let's move forward to the shore, okay? So Melissa and Joe Gorga, they're at their shore house and they're gonna have like a full house because their guests will include Tiki and Tracy and Jackie and Evan. Joe rigs a water cooler with straight vodka, okay? So later on in the episode, when Margaret and her husband later arrive, she totally thought it was water and oh my gosh, she's like trying to spit it out. She can't believe it. She's caught off guard. It's really funny. I'm telling you, like the men on uh, Real Housewives of New Jersey, they just totally give off like college dorm vibes. I totally feel like that when I watch them. They are so funny. So Dolores and Frank arrive at their shore house. Dolores broke up with David. So remember in one of my other recaps, I was saying like, what is this strange love triangle that Dolores has? You know, it just seems like she and David are not very close. So I just didn't see what connection, you know, were they trying to hold on to? So um, is she making room for Frank? This is what I wrote down a question. Is she making room for Frank to get that old thing back? Now, I feel like perhaps Frank may be more open to it than Dolores or Dolores could be trying to repress any desire to want to date her ex-husband again. I would imagine, I've never been married, so I've never been divorced, obviously, but I would imagine, like, I know if it were me, I would have so many guards up about potentially getting back with an ex-spouse. I would just remind myself of all the reasons why we divorced in the first place. So I could see if Dolores is holding back, I could totally see why she is doing that. But speaking of Mr. Frank Catalina, when they were inside their shore house, just the two of them talking, he confesses that one time during lovemaking with an, a girlfriend, they actually broke furniture. So uh, cheers to Frank on that. You know, and please let us know if you yourself in the midst of lovemaking have ever broken any furniture, okay? Because then you are in the Frank Catalina Club, all right? So now, Teresa, she ends up staying at Jennifer's shore house, Jennifer Aiden. So Teresa has a shore house. However, she double booked that weekend and she actually has her boyfriend Louis's parents staying in her shore house along with Louis's sons. So she said, you know, she just wouldn't feel totally relaxed if she stayed at her own shore house. But I actually think that Teresa just didn't want to film Louis's parents and sons. Perhaps they weren't down with it. 
but I feel like that was more so the reason. Because I mean, if it's all about how many people are actually in your house, I mean, you're filming with a whole group of people. How, how relaxing is one of those cast trips anyway? You know what I mean? So, and then you just end up staying at Jennifer's house. Jennifer brought her two kids. So I kind of feel like when Teresa said, you know, she's got people in her shore house, she wouldn't feel relaxed. I felt like that was all cap. She just didn't want them to film. When everyone arrives to the shore, they all meet up at the beach and Dolores announces to the ladies that she and David broke up. Nobody seemed shocked at all, okay? It was almost like glossed over. And then Dolores decides that it would be good to carry a bone back to Jennifer and let her know that after her little melee with Jackie at the college party, Jackie actually said she didn't care that Bill stuck his in somebody else. So Jen is offended. She feels like it's extremely vulgar. And um, she asked if anyone else witnessed it. So I don't think that was her way of just saying flat out Dolores could be lying on Jackie. I think she just wanted to see if there was a witness to kind of like stack the deck against Jackie for when she confronts her. So um, at the beach, both the men and the women are talking about Louis, Teresa's boyfriend. And Louis hasn't arrived yet. Now, just to briefly recap, there was some video, I think it might have been circulating on Twitter, of Louis along with other men and women on the beach. And I guess like the video was very quote unquote creepy. And uh, Margaret keeps saying, you know, in various episodes that Louie needs to address it. She's like a dog with a bone. Uh, Margaret, she will not let up, okay? And she is not letting up on Louie. Melissa says that while, you know, she's heard things about Louie, she says in her confessional that it's clear that Louie makes Teresa happy because when Teresa is around Louie, her eyes light up. So she said, you know, he's good to her. So I kind of feel like in Melissa's head, she is weighing both the good and the bad, which I think is what we should do as human beings with each other that's giving each other grace. So um, I liked her confessional on Louis for sure. Teresa's boyfriend, Louis, arrives to the shore, but he feels uncomfortable according to one of the show producers. So, you know, keep in mind what I just said to you. So Teresa's boyfriend, Louis, arrives to the shore where they all are, but we don't see Louis in episode four. We hear from a show producer who walks up to Teresa. Teresa is in Jennifer's house. So they've left the beach. They've gone back to their respective shore homes. And the producer tells Teresa that Louis is here, but he feels uncomfortable because he thinks that the cast, that they're all talking about him. And the show, uh, so Teresa says to the show producer that she actually explained to Louis, look, if you ever feel uncomfortable around this group, don't come around because I don't want you to feel uncomfortable. And Teresa says in her confessional that Louis didn't sign up for this. She's the public figure, not him. But he is somewhat attached to her, her public persona because they're dating each other. But she said he didn't sign up for it. He didn't sign up to be filmed and judged. And so the episode ends with Teresa being angry and saying that she's leaving. And so that's how the episode ends, you guys. So one thing about the New Jersey franchise, the producers are excellent at always giving us cliffhangers at the end of each episode. You know, I'm already um, invested. I'll definitely be tuning in next week because I want to see if the producers and Jennifer are able to calm Teresa down to get her to stay and finish out the trip. You know, or if she's going to leave and like let Louie know that she's leaving so that they can link up. And there was also an earlier part in the episode, maybe like right before the show producer walked up or right before they went to the beach, where Louie called her and Teresa said, I'm miked. And he said, take it off. 
So Louis could have just been having like a bad day. You don't know, also, unfortunately, some viewers, you don't know if they've been in his DMs on his social media, you know, calling him names or making him feel uncomfortable. Because I, I am curious as to how that T got back to Louis that the cast had been discussing him, you know, on the shore trip or in general, you know, but um, I kind of feel like he was having a bad day and feeling maybe in his head, you know? So that was my recap of episode four, season 12 of The Real Housewives of New Jersey. Definitely check it out if you have the time to do so, or I hope this recap helps you feel connected to the season thus far. Thanks again for watching my content. Please subscribe to Show Style and Spirit if you have not already done so. Please like and share this video on your social media or text it to your friends whom you know uh, likes to watch The Real Housewives of New Jersey. I appreciate your support so much. Take good care. Bye-bye.